Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I'm excited to bring you part one of my top patriotic summer DIYs. So let's get started. off our first DIY is this wood tray flag made using four of the wood trays from Dollar Tree, some craft sticks, and some red, white, and blue spray paint. Three of the trays I'm spraying white and one I'm spraying blue. Then I'm taking some of these larger craft sticks and measuring where I need to cut them so that they fit into the bottom of the tray and I'm going to cut nine of these. Three for each of my three white trays. And we're going to spray those nine craft sticks with this Colonial Red spray paint. Next, taking some wood glue and some of these craft clamps from Dollar Tree, I am gluing all four of my trays together. You can see the blue one is there in the top left corner. Once my two pairs of trays are glued together, I'm going to glue the top row to the bottom row, again, using the clamps until they are completely dried. Then taking some hot glue, we're gonna go ahead and glue those red painted craft sticks into each tray like this to be the red stripes of our flag. Then using this stencil from Dollar Tree, it just has a bunch of different stars on it just for something different for the stars. And I'm just using a little foam sponge and sponge painting some white chalk paint to get the stars for my flag. And that is our finished product. If you don't wanna use spray paint, of course you can always use chalk paint or any acrylic paint that you may have on hand. For DIY number two, we're going to be making a sign using a pizza pan and this blue truck garden stake, some poster letters, and a wood star, along with some different ribbons and some scrapbook paper. So the first thing I did is I spray painted my pizza pan white, mostly around the edges, a little in the middle. And then I decided I wanted the center of my sign to be this scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby, and I just turned it over to the back and I'm kind of pressing with my fingers to see where I need to cut out the circle. It won't be exact, but it should fit inside just fine. So once I get that cut out, we'll get that centered there in our pizza pan and we're going to Mod Podge that on. One of the reasons I do spray a little bit of spray paint on the center of my pan is just to create more of a gritty surface that the Mod Podge can stick to. I do spray also the back of my scrapbook paper. It just seems to help adhere the paper to the Mod Podge without getting any air bubbles. Next, I'm taking some of this white poly rope from Dollar Tree that I had left over from my last video, and I'm just going to go around that space between my scrapbook paper and my pizza pan. This is why I said it's okay if your circle is not perfectly cut because you'll be filling in that space. Next, I wanted this wood star. This is one of the ornaments from, no it's not. This is from a bag from Michaels of just all sorts of different sizes of wood stars. So I'm just painting that red. Then taking some of these poster letters from Dollar Tree and one of these um, cutting mats or chopping mats, I'm going to pick out the letters here for the bottom that say Liberty. And I'm just lining them up there on the chopping mat so that I can make sure they're centered. And then just one at a time, I start pressing down the tops of the letters. And then once they're all in place, I just carefully lift out that chopping mat and my letters are all perfectly lined up. 
Then for the top, I put land and then with smaller letters of. I did wanna fill in that space at the bottom with three smaller stars. You can see I painted them red, white, and blue. And then on all four of my stars, I'm going to take some antique wax, brush it on and real quickly wipe it off just to give my wood stars a little bit more of an antique look to match the scrapbook paper. And then I'm just going to place and glue the red, white, and blue wood stars there under the word Liberty. And then now because we have our words in place, we can go ahead and glue down the cute blue metal truck from the garden stake. I'm using some E6000 there in the middle and then around a couple places on the edges, I'll use hot glue as well for that immediate bond. my bow at the top I'm just taking a variety of widths and colors of ribbon and I'm going to do what I call a crisscross bow so I'm cutting two pieces of this burlap and then I'm going to lay them down on the table in an X and then for each remaining ribbon I'm just going to do the same thing cut two pieces and stack them there's the red the white the red and white gingham check, and then this skinniest one that's like blue and red plaid. And then just taking a piece of jute twine, we're gonna tie that in a knot in the center. It's a really easy way to make a bow alternative. I'm just dovetailing my burlap here, and then I will trim the ends of all the other ribbons. And now that the bow is all trimmed up, we're going to put some E6000 on our tray and then use also some hot glue on the back of our ribbon to get that adhered there to the top of our pizza pan sign. And lastly, we'll take our large red star and we're going to glue that down to the center of our bow and then also glue it a little bit to the pizza pan. It'll kind of angle downwards a little bit as the final touch for our sign. And here's what it looks like. I just love this. I love the bright white with also the truck and the cute ribbons at the top. And this could hang on a wall or your front door or just stand leaning on like a mantle. If you are new to my channel today, thanks so much for hopping by, and I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button and hit it again when the bell appears so YouTube will notify you every time I upload new content. For DIY number three, we're going to recycle some wine bottles, use some spray paint again, some pom-poms, some stickers, and some painter's tape. So I spray painted all three of my bottles white, and then with one of the bottles, I'm going to just use some star stickers. These are going to be as stencils. And then on the other two bottles, I'm using painter's tape to make stripes going all the way up the bottle. So here you can see what our bottles look like. And then we are going to spray paint the star one blue and the other two red. This will give us our stars and our stripes. Now these pom-poms were found in the toy section of Dollar Tree. Just take off the handle and then I'm re-wrapping this so that when I stick it in the bottle, it will kind of hang out red and silver and blue. This was one of those weights that you can tie balloons to. I liked the white stars on it. So I'm reusing this as well in my bottles. And then these little stars, I'm adding to the two bottles that have the pom-poms to give them their white. Now I'm also using these blue and red sparkly chenille stems. I'm going to use three of each and just wrapping them around a marker or a spoon handle or something, make them into little coils or springs. And we're going to add these as well to our bottles just with a little bit of hot glue. We're actually gonna put all six of these in our middle bottle that just has those straight white pieces from the balloon weight. 
Lastly, I'm taking some wood letters from Dollar Tree. I painted them red, white, and blue, and I am just hot gluing those to the front of each bottle as our final touch. And here's our finished centerpiece. These would look great on a table or on a mantle or anywhere you just want a little patriotic pop of color and decoration. For DIY number four, we're going to make a patriotic version of a mini book stack using one of these wood crates from Dollar Tree, red, white, and blue chalk paint, a few small wood stars, some sticker letters, some jute twine. So I made a spring version of this. I'm just now going to make a red, white, and blue version. So I'm just painting the top section all the way around my crate with my crimson Waverly chalk paint. And then I'm going to jump to the bottom section going all the way around with our blue, which is called Ocean. And then once those are dry, we will tape those off and paint our middle section white. And I don't know about you, but I always get super excited to peel that painter's tape off and see the three sections without all that mess that's on the painter's tape. So once the tape is removed, we now have our red, white, and blue books in our book stack. And the next thing I'm going to do is tape off a small uh, line there on the top. I'm going to add some blue and then later we'll add some stars. So I'm just taping off that top rectangle that is now red, and we're going to paint that with our ocean blue like this, and then let that dry. Once that is all dry, I'm taking my sticker letters and I'm starting all the way at the right, and I'm going to have the books say faith, family, freedom, just like that. And then we will take some Mod Podge and go over that after I sanded just a little bit in the little crevice between the books. Coming back to those four little stars, I'm going to paint those white. And then once those are dry, I'm just going to hot glue those to the top of our book stack just for another little added patriotic touch. Lastly, we're going to wrap our books together with some jute twine. So I'm just taking a little dot of hot glue and attaching the end of the jute twine there. Once that is secure, I'm gonna wrap that string around my book stack, oh, about four or five times, just kind of making it a little spread out, and then we'll trim it and glue the other end inside the crate as well. Then taking a little bit more of the jute string, I'm wrapping it around my four fingers a few times. Trim that off and then with another little piece of jute string, tying a knot in the middle to make ourselves a little bow that we will then glue on the top of our book stack to finish it off. And here's our little patriotic mini book stack. I plan on using this in my tiered tray to decorate for the summer, Memorial Day, and the 4th of July season. DIY 5 is another project using some recycled items. I've got some cans here from Sauce, some spray paint again, some Dollar Tree contact paper, a star punch, and some ribbon. So I'm starting out by painting all three of our cans white, kind of like we did with the wine bottles. Then with my star punch and my contact paper, I'm just cutting out or punching out what are going to be stencils like we did with the wine bottle and then painting over those 
with the blue spray paint. Then when we take off those stars, you can see the white underneath. So we're doing this to all three of our cans. Then taking a nail, I'm making two holes in the bottom, which will now be the top of each of our cans. This is so we can thread some jute twine through there to then tie a knot and be able to hang these. I actually have these hanging from my porch right now. So there's the loop on each of our three cans. Then I'm taking some of this red and white satin ribbon I bought at, I believe, Walmart. It's one inch. And I'm hot gluing strips of that to the bottom of the cans. And then they can hang and the beautiful red and white streamers blow in the wind. So here, I'll just hold it up for you. And then I'll show you what they look like on my porch. For DIY number six, we're going to make a standing Uncle Sam using some of these giant craft sticks, Jenga blocks, some red and white chalk paint, this mop head, and one of these little mushroom shaped wood plugs. So to start out, I'm using four of these giant craft sticks from Walmart's craft section. I'm going to paint two of them crimson and two of them white with my Waverly chalk paint. To make the stand for our Uncle Sam, I'm using eight Jenga blocks. You could, of course, use tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree if you'd like. You would probably just need a few more. I'm gluing four pairs together like this and then two pairs together like this so that I can make the front and the back of my stand. Now, I do have this little strip of wood. You could use a piece of a ruler that I am painting with the ocean blue. This is going to be part of Uncle Sam's hat. And then these six little wood stars. Again, they are from that multi-size pack from Michaels. I am going to paint these white. And once all of those are dry, I'm just going to space out and then hot glue on these six white stars to that blue strip of wood. Now coming back to the tall part of Uncle Sam's hat with the red and white giant craft sticks, I just sanded those a little bit. Then taking two more craft sticks, I trimmed down just to glue to the back so that these will all um, be held together in place. Then flipping that back over, I'm going to take that blue brim of the hat and I'm going to just draw a pencil line here of what will be below the hat. And I'm going to paint this just with a pink color because this is technically going to be where Uncle Sam's face is. So just one little coat of pink. And then I'm going to come back to my Jenga blocks now that the wood glue is dry and I'm just going to paint both pieces of my base completely black. Now, using a mop head from Dollar Tree, I'm going to cut eight inch lengths and I used 20, basically five to cover each of these craft sticks. So one craft stick at a time, I'm taking four eight inch pieces of the mop head and sticking the ends there down in the hot glue. And I'm gonna repeat this three more times until I have Uncle Sam's quote unquote face completely covered by his beard. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and glue that blue piece with the stars in place butting it up right against the ends of the mop strings. And then adding the little wood plug for his nose. So I guess this is kind of like a gnomish looking Uncle Sam, but I thought this was super cute. Then I kind of unwound the four strands of each piece of string so that it was a little fuller and just um, covered up his face a little bit more, you can see there. Now flipping it over to the back, I have a five gallon paint stir stick that I'm going to glue 
to the back. This is going to let our Uncle Sam stand. And then once that's in place, we will sandwich the bottom end of the stick between our two black pieces of our stand that will let him stand up. And here he is what do you guys think I think this is so cute you can see I also did add a small piece of bamboo skewer there just to help cover up the ends of the mop string DIY number seven is going to be a very simple flag porch sign just using any size of scrap wood my star punch again with the contact paper red white and blue chalk paint so here I'm just measuring down about eight inches from the top and I'm going to paint this section with my blue. It looks like I used a folk art paint, but it's pretty much um, like the ocean blue. But first I'm going to actually paint it white before I put my contact paper stars down, again, using them like sticker stencils. And then once all of those are in place, then I will paint the kind of a country-ish blue over those and then peel up the stars so that you'll be able to see the white stars on the blue background. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the whole rest of the front of my sign white. I probably could have started by just painting the whole thing white, but anyway, then I'm going to use some painter's tape to make some stripes down the length of my sign, and this will help us paint our red stripes. I'm using a set of paper stencils from Walmart of course if you have a Cricut or something you can just uh, cut some vinyl letters but I'm tracing these with a sharpie and then I am going to fill them in with a black Elmer's paint marker this does take a little bit of time but I actually find it very therapeutic to uh, color in so you can just fill in your letters until you have the entire word welcome filled in and here's our finished sign with the stars at the top and the stripes going down and then the word welcome this would look very cute on your front porch or if you have a large entryway you could put it there as well you can see it's so big I had a hard time fitting it in the frame DIY number eight is going to be a Pledge of Allegiance reverse canvas. I found this printable online just by Google searching Pledge of Allegiance free printable. An eight by 10 canvas from Dollar Tree, some antique wax and some beads. So using my handy dandy staple remover, I'm gonna go around and remove all the staples from the frame of this eight by 10 canvas and then remove the canvas all in one piece. You can save that for another time. Then I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to just darken up, kind of antique this wood and bring out the wood grain. Again, you just brush this on and then wipe off the excess and you get a beautiful result that shows you the nice wood grain look. Then I'm taking my canvas. Actually, I decided to um, use this as the background, so I'm going to give it a coat of my Waverly Chalk Paint in crimson and then let that dry completely. Then go ahead and just trim around with scissors that um, inside line because that's all you're going to need. You can see there, then it would fit right behind the frame. Now taking my printable, I am going to trim it on my Fiskars trimmer so that I can see more of that red, which I think matched the red of the star really well. I'm going to put some hot glue around the edge of the canvas and then I'm going to lay the wood frame on top of it before we attach the Pledge of Allegiance to the canvas. Mm -hmm. 
Next, once we have our printable centered where we want it, I'm just going to lift up one side, attach down with hot glue, and then flip it around and glue the rest of it down. Now, I didn't like that you could see staples on this frame, so I'm taking four more of those wood stars and just gluing them to the corners. Then with some jute string and some of these beads, I'm still working on this bag of beads I got from a thrift store. I just made a short strand of them that I will hot glue to the back for the handle for our picture. And I thought this was such a great finished product. I love the different colors of wood and the red and of course the words justice for all on the bottom there. DIY number nine will be another type of flag sign using three of these square signs from Dollar Tree, some of these red acrylic gems, some white chalk paint, and one of those chunky wood stars. So the first thing I'm doing here is removing the sawtooth hangers from all three of my signs and then taking out the centerpiece there. And then we will also remove the backs from the frames so that we can easily paint those and then return them to the frames. So I did take one of the backs and I painted that spray painted with that blue spray paint. Then taking all three frames, I'm just giving it a bright white coat of chalk paint as well as the chunky wood star. I'm also going to paint that white. Then I'm going to hot glue two of the white frames or backs into the frames. So two of my boxes are completely white now with background and frame. And these two squares will be our red and white stripes. So for the red stripe, I wanted to try something a little more dimensional and I'm taking some of these red acrylic gems, seven of them fit perfectly across. So we're going to make stripes out of these red acrylic gems to fill in these um, two white square signs. So let's see, that means for each square we used 28, which I believe is about 56 total of these red gems. Then coming back to our third sign, we are now gluing the blue background in there and then we're going to glue our white chunky um, star right in the center. Now you could return the sawtooth hangers to be able to hang these or you can just stack them on top of each other in whatever configuration you want. I wanted to go ahead and antique up the frames a little bit so I did take a sponge and brush on some antique wax and here is our finished product. I love that you could stack these any way you'd like, horizontally, vertically, or even in a triangle shape. For DIY number 10, I was really excited to find something to do with this old shutter that I bought from a garage sale. One of these wood stars and our red, white, and blue chalk paint again. So the first thing I had to do was remove some hardware, but I did want to keep that center hinge because I liked that these two were connected and I could use that to have it stand up on a shelf or a table. Once the hardware was removed, you could see the unfinished wood underneath. So I went ahead and sanded around those edges so that it all looked uniform and then took my antique wax and gave it a nice coat of that dark stain color. Then taking some painter's tape, I'm just taping off the slats area of the shutters and those top five slats on the left, I'm going to use our ocean chalk paint. I am going to water it down just a little bit to look a little bit more weathered. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and stick my brush in there and paint all five of those for the blue section of our flag. Can see I was using a piece of cardstock to tuck under the slat that I was currently painting and then I kind of spread them apart a little bit pardon my shoulder 
Next, I'm going ahead and I'm painting all of my white slats. It was funny because these shutters actually ended up having 13 slats that would be the stripes, so I thought that was pretty perfect. Taking another one of these larger wood stars from Michaels, I'm just giving this one a coat of the white chalk paint as well, and it will go on our blue section. Then once all the white is dry, now I'm coming through and painting all of my red stripes. And again, the most satisfying part when you get to remove that painter's tape. The finish wasn't perfect, but I was able to just um, scrape off with my fingernail a couple little spots where some chalk paint had gotten onto the front of the wood. And to finish off this shutter flag, I just then hot glued the white star to the center of the blue square and everything is finished. And I love that this can, like I said before, stand up on its own because it has that hinge in the center. I love finding new ways to use um, repurposed or thrifted items. I hope you guys like this shutter flag too. DIY 11 are these flag candle jars. I'm using three of the small flags, some of these star tea lights, some white sand, and three large mouth jars. So taking some Mod Podge, I'm applying it pretty liberally to the front of the flag and then gluing that side down to the back of the jar. Then you can see the flag through the jar there. So I'm doing three of those, then taking some of my jute cord here from Walmart, wrapping it around and adding a jute bow. Then using some white sand from Dollar Tree, I believe I used two bags to fill the bottoms of these three jars to go along with the red, white, and blue theme. And then we're going to use two of the blue star battery powered tea lights and one of the red and just add those to our jars. You could of course use real candles if you'd like. I just thought these were really cute for 4th of July because they were stars. And here's what they look like. These would look great again on a mantle or on a tablescape. However, you would want to use them and you could always just do one or you could do actually as many as you'd like. And our last project for today's video, DIY number 12, is this palette sign flag. You can use any sort of sign for a background. I have this one that looks a lot like the signs I make from five gallon paint sticks and attach them together on the back. You probably just want a rectangular shape, but of course you don't have to use a rectangular shape if you don't like. Here I'm just using some painter's tape to tape off my section that will be blue. This time I'm just using some acrylic paint from Michaels and painting that whole section blue and then letting that dry. I am going to use one again of the larger wood stars. You know what? These large ones actually are from Walmart. I just saw the packaging. <laughs> then I'm going to retape off the blue section and then this painter's tape was like exactly the same width as the slats. So that worked out nice. I just painted or taped off the ones that will be white so that I could paint the red ones. You could actually leave those white stripes natural if you'd like. I kind of like that look right there. Or go ahead and tape back over the red stripes to then paint your white stripes. Once all that paint is dry, I'm going to use this metal ruler to line up my sticker letters. And I'm gonna have this flag say the same three words as our mini book stack, faith, family, freedom. Now you may be wondering why I'm using white sticker letters 
on white paint. Well, that's because I'm just using these stickers as stencils. I'm gonna put them on, trace around them, and then I'm going to use a blue paint marker to fill in the words so that they really pop off that white background. Once all of that is dry, I'm going to add some detailing with some jute twine here on my red stripes. So I'm just attaching that to the back and I'm going to wrap some jute twine on each of my red stripes, oh, maybe just a few times. And then even up here on these stripes that are a little smaller, I'm going to cut individual pieces um, to make them look like they are wrapped around maybe underneath the blue square. So here's our finished product. You could add a hanger to the back if you'd like, or just use it to sit on a shelf. Thanks again for joining us today. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you love budget home decor DIYs. It really does help me to grow my channel. And then let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite. Thanks and take care.